Hi, everyone. Welcome to Poetry and Talk. Poetry and Talk is a new online interviewing platform for poets to share their poetry, background, and inspiration. Thank you so much for watching today. We have a new guest poet to introduce you to. We'd like to wish everyone happy holidays, and we wish you a joyous holiday season as well. Please stay connected with us on social media, on our Facebook page, Poetry and Talk, and on our YouTube channel. We appreciate your support. Please subscribe, like, and share. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Poetry and Talk. And again, thank you for watching. I'd like to welcome our guest poet for today, Keisha. Welcome, Keisha. Thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. So we have our customary um, guest poet to open the show with a poem. So we'll, we'll kind of um, pass the mic, so to speak, to you. OK. Um, this one's been in the work for a little while. Um, it's kind of near and dear and new. It's called Old Lover. As I lay here, wide awake, tossing and turning, yearning to feel the warmth, feel the press of a body close, images running through my mind, times that now seem just distant memories. Tears fall. I taste the saltiness of release as emotions spill through me like a bathtub running over. I'm so full at capacity, struggling to hold it in. I'm overflowing with images, with voices, with words. And the tears keep coming, keep flowing because the loneliness sometimes is too much. So I cry alone in the dark, praying for a time I have no more tears. I struggled so much in this life, striving for perfection, striving for identity, striving to belong, striving to be wanted, love. And as I lay here, having all the feelings move through me, I find my voice through writing. Like an old lover coming back, I feel the urge to put pen to paper. I had the urge to caress the solid lines, hug the curves of my pen and move swiftly across the page like an old lover. Poetry whispers to me sweet nothings calling me home, calling me back to bed, kissing away the tears and yet the feeling causes more anxiety. Poetry promises release. Poetry promises to love me as I am. Poetry reminds me of the times, times when I truly was in darkness, truly in a place of no return, staring at red pills, blades that kiss the skin so sweetly, the seductive color of red. And I tightly hold on the blanket around me for security, for the weight I yearn for, comfort. Poetry caresses my face, kisses my skin, holds me tight. I struggle in the embrace. It's been so long, it seems wrong to take solace in its touch, but I melt. Try not to cave, but the tears keep coming. The release happens, I cry out, and feel the feels and remind myself I am a queen, queen of my destiny, queen of my life. Poetry lifts my head, tells me I'm worthy and stops spilling tears for over peasants. Wear the crown of beauty I've been given, drink the forbidden wine, wine of freedom, freedom of self and revel in it. And know that when all seems lost, when those bodies leave my bed, cold, empty, silent, it will come, poetry will come as my one true love to save me, to hold me, to love me unconditionally. That's the end. That's beautiful, Keisha. Thank you for sharing that. Um, there's so much depth and uh, so, so many areas that you're touching upon and, and sharing with us. Would you elaborate uh, for, with us, please? So uh, this poem for me, is very near and dear. Um, it talks about bodies. It talks about uh, people, relationships. Um, as I don't want to say a metaphor, but it's talking as you allowing others into your space, into your home, your body. And sometimes they take space, they take root there. And when they leave, whether it be actual people, whether it be things that may be close to us, that leaves a space that's in there that seems that can't be filled. 
And for me personally, poetry, when I am down and out, even like I had spoke to you earlier, poetry has been absent of me for some time. And I find I turn back to it. It always comes when I need it. And for me, this was my release. When I finally felt the need to cry, I was up at 3, 4 a.m. in the morning just feeling those feelings and wanting to release it. Poetry came. Words have been absent from me for months, years, actually. And then they just started to flow. I grabbed that pen and paper and I just jotted it down, whether it made sense or not, and then slowly formed this. And then I saw the beauty in it. Letting, it was almost like poetry talking through me to myself, if that makes sense. Like, just know I am here for you. I will always be here for you. Even when, say, if it's a physical person, whether it be when you don't feel like you can be there for yourself, I will be here for you. I take shelter in me. And that's what poetry is for me. It's my shelter. And it's been since I've uh, been a child and started writing young that it's always give, been there for me and to help me grow. Mm -hmm. There's some beautiful analogies um, that you've presented, Keisha. I love the analogy of a body that it may not just be a physical body, but it could be just different things that, that we become attached to or that we experience and that they take up space. What an interesting way to, to look at things. And also that poetry is a shelter for you. And it's, it's a, almost like a sanctuary. And it, it's almost like a parent speaking to you in, in a sense, a, a loving, comforting, nurturing parent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. And it's funny you said that at a young age, I actually lost my mother at 15. Um, and for me, she felt like mom and dad. And that's when poetry really ramped up for me. Um, I started writing when she uh, was diagnosed when I was uh, 11 with cancer. And, you know, it was, you know, those beginnings of poetry as young poets, we're just writing things we don't understand. And slowly it changed, it morphed into something so beautiful. Um, and after she passed, that's when the words flourished for me. I started writing with more emotion, with more depth and then pushing myself and uh, ended up getting into poetry groups um, online and um, out and about at library sessions, uh, being able to read my work, have other poets critique it, give me their pers uh, perspective of what they thought of what I was saying. And that's helped me sh uh, shift and move how I write and how I am today. So poetry, like you said, is, is almost like that parent. And it was for me, it was where, who I turned to, you know, when I needed that release, when I needed somebody to listen to me and to hear those feelings out, poetry was it. It was that, that mother, that father, that best friend, that everyone for me. So poetry is very important to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really beautiful. So poetry has been with you um, since you were quite young. And then yes. you mentioned that it became kind of absent. Can you kind of fill us in a little bit with, with what was going on and then kind of bring us up to speed, if you would, please? Sure. So um, I want to say I felt its absence maybe around the age of 24. I just turned 30 in September. Um, and so from 24 to 30, I've kind of been in a state of limbo um, in regards to my emotions, my feelings, um, not sure where to turn. So I turn to people, right? Friendships. I turn to whether it be wanting to have relationships, whether it be um, anything and or my work. So I would throw myself into my work and trying to find something that wasn't there, right? Um, and then also to me personally, I've had a lot of health issues from since my mother's passing. Um, internally, I think my emotions overtook me and they've kind of developed in my body, right? And um, with that being said, I kept focusing on me. I was like, oh, I gotta nurture me. I gotta help me, but how do I do that? You know, so again, I turned to those individuals, to things, and I just felt incomplete. That hole was gone. You know, it, it was just there, I mean, and I couldn't figure out how to fill this space. How, how do we fill this to, to flourish? And it wasn't until um, 27 that I sat back and realized I needed to take my health, 
my mental health mainly too, as well as my physical health into a reality check. Um, I needed to put myself first in ways that I never did before and try and do things from a more natural perspective. I went to many doctors and they're like, we can't figure out what's wrong with you. But, you know, they readily gave me pills, which I talked about in the poem, the red pills. You know, it was like, like, oh, the one, you know, if I wanted to end, just take this pill. But I learned in a way for me that was selfish because I have a gift that I feel like the world needs to hear, that they need to share that when you're down and out, that's when you need to speak more. Don't hide your voice. Don't hide that voice. That's what needs to be heard the most is when you're in that space, it needs to come out. So from 27 to 30, I've been seeing a naturopath dealing with a more holistic uh, herbal type of living. And that's when poetry came back um, in a way that I didn't expect it to because I think I was pushing it in the, in the, way, in the way back because I thought I needed somebody something, you know, whether it be work, I needed to feel like I belonged in all these areas of my life, which didn't matter, um, where I needed to be there for myself. And in, in almost an odd way, it's poetry is a version of me, like another part of me that I've been hiding from pushing aside. And that's what I needed to be pulling in closer. So from that time, I've been doing my own natural healing with my own, you know, herbal remedies, as well as writing. And this past year has been transformational, especially now that we're all kind of stuck in, in the house, you know, by ourselves, that I've been able to really truly focus on me, my thoughts, and where I'm going. Um, and poetry is right there with me along this ride. And it's been amazing being able to kind of be shut in because now I can, I hear her. I hear her talking through me all the time. And she's like, put that pen to paper, write it down, whatever you're feeling, even if it doesn't make sense, because it will make sense to you. Just not right now, it does. Mm -hmm. So that's when your inspiration hits. You hear her voice, which, which you intuit as you. Yes. Um, and um, then from there, you, you go ahead and you just go ahead and, and let the emotions come out, whatever it is, in kind of like an unfiltered, kind of pure way. Yes. Yes, definitely. Because before I would write when I was younger, very emotionally, very, when I was angry, the poem seemed angry. When I was sad, the poem seemed sad, but it was to get those feelings that I was feeling out. Now that I'm not a child and now I understand myself a little better, it's I talk to myself internally, like, why are you feeling this? Where is this coming from? How, you know, how are we going to change this? And, and then poetry kind of comes in and is like, let's, let's write it down. It might not make sense, but let it out. Whatever you're feeling, let it come out and then we'll assess it afterwards. And afterwards it ends up looking in the form of a poem. Sometimes it's in the form of uh, me and my creations. Um, I actually started my own little herbal business because of wanting to, to heal heal myself and then heal others with just not just herbal remedies, but also with word. So just being able to talk to people has been very instrumental for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So poetry has been instrumental in self-discovery for you and yes. for healing. And you also mentioned um, a, a release as well, which would be tied okay. into your healing. Yes, for sure. And in terms of your writing, Keisha, so it, it sounds like 2020 has been very focused um, on you and, um, you know, kind of gaining a little bit more insight into yourself and healing yourself. And I think um, taking, you know, being empowered and uh, kind of like taking your power back and, and kind of being your own doctor, because you said that they weren't really, you know, kind of moving in a direction that you wanted to anyway. So you yeah. took all this upon yourself and had the courage and the trust to do it. And it sounds like 2020 has been like a super, super intense focus of this. And also with your, your writing and your poetry kind of combined. Yes, definitely. It definitely has. It's taken many forms. And it's funny how just putting pen to paper really spurred me on. Um, it was earlier this year where I just felt really down and out. Um, I felt like the world was kind of coming down on me. 
and I needed some something, something for it to come out. It was a, the way I like to describe it is as a bottle and it's slowly the water's rising. And I felt that water rising, the, the emotions, the, the everything coming up inside of me and then just overflowing the top. It's now spilling over like that bathtub, which I brought up in, in that poem. And that was the best way to describe it. And that poem is what set everything off. It's Keisha, you need to, to do something. It's, it's that release. It's that emotional release, whether it be through poetry, whether it be through, I find even just having discussions um, with people um, about whether it be their issues or my issues and how, you know, maybe that interchange of information will help us. Like that release has been so influential. And when I talk about healing, I talk about um, that, that self-care. Sometimes it's moments, just those bubble baths, right? Sometimes it's just uh, taking a walk and appreciating nature. And it's in moments like that, it's almost like I hear poetry talking to me. I see the beauty, you know, in everything. Or sometimes I'll think like, oh, I, I see my mother in this. I feel the caress of the wind. And I think of her like saying, it's okay, I got you. You know what I mean? The little things like that, that it's really grounded me. It, it's made nature just so much more beautiful. It's made relationships a lot more meaningful to me because that communication piece, now that I know how to, how to write, how to articulate how I'm feeling, I push that in others, whether it be friendships, whether it be relationships or my work. I'm like, I push people. I'm like, hey, what, you know, what's going on? Let's, let's talk this out because that interchange of information and energy is, is surreal. When you get that, that, those like creative juices flowing, it's amazing. And it's all poetry. Um, one of my biggest things is I call myself poetry in motion. And it's very true. I walk and breathe poetry. You see poetry in your life. Anyone could see poetry in your life if you just pay attention. It's there. It's always there. Mm -hmm. I love that poetry in motion. What, what a beautiful um, expression. Um, so would it be correct, Keisha, to say that um, it, going back to um, when you lost your mom very early and there was a lot of emotions, um, that, you know, naturally, you know, we're stirring up and whatnot. It sounds like they kind of got trapped within you and you were quite young. You didn't know how to express them. It wasn't, you know, it kind of didn't have that frame of reference, so to speak. So do you feel that um, with, you know, your poetry and focusing on your healing, the natural remedies, uh, communicating, you know, in, in an honest, uh, a true way with others and, and all the different platforms that you've been seeking, that that release and coming out has really been at the forefront of your healing because you've kind of, in a sense, found your voice. Yes, yes, definitely. It's like now all of those emotions that I had inside of me, again, kind of like that bathtub, it's overflowing, but not in a negative standpoint now. It's, it's almost like with rejoice. It's I'm able to come into myself. For the longest time, I felt like, who am I? And so 2020 for me this year has been that forefront, who am I? Um, so I've been on this self-discovery journey um, for a little bit, but this year is mainly focused on that. What makes me tick? Um, what do I like? What do I not like? Um, conversations, do I not you know, entertain with individuals, people who I might have entertained in the past, do I wanna hold space for them here now? Um, I've heard before, you know, again, about that interchange of, of energy. Um, there are just certain things that I, I think a little differently now. And I want to say when I talk to people, sometimes I think of um, it was I think it was a meme and it talked about how it's good to before you spill your problems to say a friend to ask, do you have space for me? Do you hold space where I can give you my problem? Right. But it's not up to us as individuals to then take that person's problem, fix that person's problem. But sometimes even just having that conversation and those friends unloading on us can be too much for us because we don't have space. We're going through our own issues. And that's what was happening. I felt like my body had became home to individuals, to jobs, to stress. And it wasn't, it wasn't my body anymore. I was holding space for, you know, health issues, for bad friendships, for bad relationships, you know, um, just issues. 
And I'm like, this isn't the home that I want. I want a clean house. So that's what I started to do. Clean house from a spiritual mindset. Um, definitely a lot of prayers in that. And I saw the blessings come from that. Once I started eliminating, getting rid of all the old baggage of things that were holding me down, that's when I started to see myself flourish. This, I was smiling more. Again, I got to see the beauty of the world around me, um, even in people. People that I might have been like, oh, I don't, <laughs> I don't care for them. I started seeing them for, you have, you have something going on. Let's talk this out. I have space now for you to, to give me because I find that on this journey this year that I am a healer, a healer in a sense of words, communicated um, interchange of give me some of yourself and I will help you um, in regards to if someone is going through some health problems, I do give you know herbal remedies for that and stuff that I've, I've built in my little herbal business. And it's like, I feel so, so good now because as I help heal others, then they help heal me. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's beautiful. So I, th you're seeing the whole interconnectedness of, of us. So your healing is my healing. My healing is your healing. It, it kind of all is kind of full circle, so to speak. Yes. So with basically you shut everything out and you just went into yourself. Yes. To, to know thyself, which I'm, I'm a big believer in. And all this beautiful, the, the beautiful Keisha is, is what you found. And, and the real Keisha, and it's kind of like a, um, an ongoing um, journey. Would, would you agree with that? Yes, definitely an ongoing journey because the Keisha now was definitely not the young Keisha when um, my mom passed, wasn't the young Keisha when, you know, I was getting those diagnoses uh, from the doctors and at hospitals and things like that. Like my mind frame is so, so different now. And I find so much more peace in myself before it was just so stressful and chaotic. And I just felt like oh, I'm being hit left and right and left and right. But now, even with things that come, I'm ready. It's almost like this year and the past few years of healing has caused me to put my armor on. Something that I didn't have before, before I was taking those blows, taking the blows. And now I'm able to have that armor stand firm when I get hit. Yeah, you may fall, but you always get up. You have to get up for yourself and for everyone else that loves you. And that's what I find too with talking to others. People don't realize how important they are, how much love is there for them, you know? And that was my case. I didn't see the love, you know? I thought it was me against the world. No one cares, no one feels. And then I had good friends come to me and express their work which I didn't know that they had for me. And that's when I knew I had to take my life into my own hands. Otherwise, who knows where I would be. And I appreciate them because they spearheaded this journey and it's continually to grow. And I'm, I'm excited to see what the future holds for, for myself and for those that follow along with me. Mm -hmm. That's such a great testament of uh, self-empowerment. Um, that's really, really beautiful. I, I think there's nothing more that could be, you know, more highly on on the table or on the menu so to speak yes. um let's talk a little about poetry and um what's going on now in terms of subject matter um what are some um themes that you're writing about um what was kind of going on with that and um, maybe some future projects um share a little more about that if you would okay um um, so currently, like you're seeing through this conversation, there's a lot of self-discovery. Um, again, 2020 is who am I? So I find my writing from even just a few years ago has completely changed. Um, I used to sit in whether it be that darkness or that emotion, and then that's that would be the whole poem. And now I find that silver lining in everything. So I'm writing and I don't know um, if you notice like towards the end of Old Lover, like, yeah, it seemed a little dark and grim, the, the crying, um, but poetry consoles. And towards the end, it talked about being a queen, wearing that crown. Don't let the peasants, which could be people, it could be things that are trying to destroy you, right? It could be illness, um, adversities that you're dealing with, um, anything. But to wear that crown, no matter what, you're still a king, you're still a queen, you're still important. 
And that's what a lot of my writing has slowly started to transform into. It's though the scenario might start off a little dark or a little gloomy or a little upsetting, it still finds that, that good at the end where it's like, even though you're going through this, look at this, look at what you're going to become. Look at how great it is if you just pay a little bit more attention kind of to, uh, like what we were speaking about, just see, going outside and seeing the beauty before someone might go out and it might not seem that great. But if you start to really do that self-discovery, that change, you go out and say, hey, I didn't notice that beautiful tree, right? That oak tree. And look at, at how it, it protects me, protects everyone. If you just sit under it on these beautiful days, how it covers you, but there's still so much sun, you start to have a better appreciation for everything around you. And that's what my poetry has changed. It's I'm starting to appreciate things in life that I didn't appreciate before. And I think that's going to be key with healing for myself and for others. It's when you start to look outside your, your little box, right? Our little bubble that we seem to put ourselves in and think about um, just more of the positive. Mm -hmm. I, I love that analogy also, Keisha, because basically you're, you're saying, well, first of all, you're acknowledging whatever darkness is there you know, which I think is kind of like step one, but yet, as you were saying, you step out of the box and you kind of have a broader perspective and you start to develop, you know, more of, um, more insights. You started to, to, to yes. um, develop gratitude and faith and you started to kind of bring more light into it, kind of seeing it from a, a broader range and, and a broader scope. And that seems like that, along with the poetry, which, you know, has been instrumental, really help to break a lot of boundaries and in, in like self-perception and whatnot. Yes, definitely. Because I was in such a dark place for years. I just saw doom and gloom. I'm like, everything is woe is me, woe is me. And then, then it clicked. It's like, look, right now you're feeling this, but you don't feel this 24 seven, right? You laugh, you cry, you, you know, you smile, you, you know, there are things that, you know, make you snicker once in a while. Like, that you don't stay in this emotion. There are other things you feel throughout the day. So follow it, kind of like that river, just follow it, flow with it. And that's what it is, that free flow of emotions. And one of the things I've been seeing a lot this year on social media is like, feel the feels. And that's so true, feel the feels. Because once you fall into it and you, you it's almost like going, um, kayaking you go into that kayak and you just you just let it go right you just take it let it take you um and flow just free flow it wherever it wherever it goes and it could it could go bad it could go good you don't know but whatever that situation um one of the things i always tell people which is one of my quotes is um in life you know every blessing is a lesson and every lesson is a blessing right like but it's it's so true. Like, even though things may come out good, best believe there was a lesson behind it. And every lesson where maybe things have went bad, that was a blessing. It was teaching you something. Pay attention to what it was teaching you. Because now that's something you put in your two belt. So when something else like that happens again, you're ready, right? So that to turn that lesson then into a blessing. Mm -hmm. So it's always something we can learn from. Um, but it's, you have to be willing to change your outlook. You can't stay stuck in that one emotion all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's great insight. I just wanted to go back to something, Keisha, because I thought that was such an interesting approach that um, in, in part of your, your healing and you like to, when you connect with other people, um, you like to, when there's something going on with you, um, you like to present to the person um, hey, is it okay if I share this with you? Do you have the space to hold? Yeah. And I think that's such an interesting approach. You don't just, you know, call a friend up or, or connect with someone and then kind of like unload. It's almost like a, a real sense of um, compassion and um, an honoring. And I, I really find that such a beautiful approach. So I'm so glad that you, you shared that with us. Yes. And I hope, you know, individuals really think on that because, you know, as best friends, right, or as friends, we just tell each other everything, whether it's bad, whether it's good, but sometimes we don't realize what those effects have on the other person. 
you know, whether it be maybe they really like that person that you just talked bad about, but they're not going to say it right, but they, they didn't really hold space for that or um, they don't really relate to what you're talking about, but they see how it, it brings worry and sadness to you so they, you know, they're going to be sad with you like wow like that's really a lot and we don't want to transfer that type of energy without holding space and asking somebody because it's a lot. And I found for me myself that I, I, as again, as feeling myself as a healer, I take on people's problems. And during uh, this time I'm learning, I need boundaries, right? Um, there are some things like I will hear you um, and maybe I will provide some things that I would have done in the situation or some things that I have done if I've been in that situation, or I will even research some help to help you get through that situation, but I'm not gonna own it. I can't own it because now at this point, I need to hold space for Keisha. I've held space for other things and issues all my life. And now it's like almost at 30, I'm holding space for me. And then moving forward, I need to focus on myself and my well being. Mm -hmm. And that's very important our self, our self worth, our self esteem, um, self awareness. We need to be aware of what's going on with our bodies, you know. Um, so, again, I have to say, going through all my health issues and things like that, and, and then having poetry at my side has helped me have a deeper appreciation for things because it showed me that, yeah, you're hurting and you're hurting now, but you don't always have to hurt or you, you don't always have to call someone up and release that energy. Sometimes it's writing it, it out. Mm -hmm. I can write it out and get that same relief as if I were to call someone, because for me, poetry is almost one of my best friends. It's, it's that mother, it's that father that I need, you know, it's, it's everything. And it's me and poetry is me. And a lot of people, I think, think of poetry as something other than themselves when they write. It's just mm -hmm. something they do, but they don't realize the beauty of, do you realize you are poetry? You are poetry in motion, everything you do. And if you just pay attention, you'll see that. Mm -hmm. uh, Keisha, I have a question. When you're uh, writing poetry, and let's say it's a, an intense emotion, whatever it is that you're experiencing, and so now you have your, your pen and paper at your computer and, and you're writing it. So do you start to, try, I'm just trying to get into the, the process through your eyes and how you experience it. So you're starting to write about this. So it's now becoming a little bit more enlivened. You're kind of like really getting into whatever the emotion is, the situation, the experience, what you're feeling. And then when you complete the poem, you, the release is towards the end. Is it constantly through it? How is that experienced? I, I go through through peaks and flows as I go through it. So if it's um, a really intense, I do, I feel it. Again, it's almost like that bottle. You start to, that building crescendo, right? And then when it when it's done, it's almost like <sighs> that sigh of release. I always feel when I write an emotional release because it is what something, and especially for me, like I said, lately, I hadn't been writing that much, but when I do now, it's, it's because something had been building up inside of me. And so when I, I'm done and I get it out, it is such a release, it's, it's unimaginable. Um, so, but during it, as I'm going through those things, my mind is, is really whirling, um, whether it be with words, because sometimes I'm just thrown with words left and right. And I'm like, well, no, that doesn't make sense. But I'm like, write it, write it. Poetry said it's like whispering in my ear, write it. It might not make sense right now, but write it. And, and that's what I do. I, you know, the, un, the raw uncut Keisha will write it all, whether it makes sense. And then when I, so I can get that release. Cause I know the issue is for me, I feel like the words are trapped. And when I write, it's letting all the words out, no matter what it is, right? Because for some reason that word came out and I might not understand why it came out, but it needed to come out. And sometimes it may not need it to be in the poetry, but it might've been something I need to reflect on. So I'll either remove that word and then reflect on it on my own because it's some self-discovery piece that I need to work on on myself, or I'll leave it depending on if it is the main concept of the whole poem and for others to understand. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's definitely the peaks and flows. I, I kind of move with it. I glide with it. And then at the end, it's that, that sigh of release, that, that overflow bubble of, I did it.
it's it's done. You know, that relief off your shoulders is there. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm, I'm so grateful that you shared that with us. And so that, and it's a lot of trust too. And then it's um, also being reflective as well. So you're kind of giving us a lot of different um, guidelines, so to speak, in, into your process. But then you also take it a step further because then you share it. Then you say, hey, this may help someone else out. So that's also trust as well. Yes, because I, I feel like as human beings, we feel that we're the only ones that go through whatever we're going through. And um, what I've realized is someone may not specifically be going through what I'm going through, but the analogies, the metaphors, whatever it is that I'm writing, they might get. So they might not understand it, but they get it. Um, one of the things that I've always um, prided was in, uh, was a poem by Maya Angelou and or a quote by her and I know I'm not going to say it right right now but the whole concept was you know people may not remember what you said or what you did but they're always remembered by how you know how you made them feel that's always been etched ingrained into me because there are so many people that I don't necessarily remember what they said or what they did for me but I do remember how they made me feel and what spurred me on into my journey. I do re remember a history teacher giving me my first poetry book after I told her, I said, yeah, I write scribble all over this. And she says, well, I have this extra book and I think you might like it. Now her actions spurred something that she may never understand. And I haven't spoken to her or seen her since, but that one action has now, even now that I'm 30, I still remember. And because she took the care, pushed me. And I had two English teachers who, once they saw my writing, told me, Keisha, you have a story to tell and you have no idea, like, and would push me into writing contests and things like that. And that one teacher got me in there and I won second place out of the whole county. And it was something I wasn't even really, you know, proud of per se. I thought it could have been better, but it was enough to have judges say, she, she, she's got it right? Something that I didn't see in myself. And it was a writing for my mother. It was a, called a reflection called um, The Woman I Most Admire. Now, I could have wrote so much more, so much in depth, but then I didn't, I didn't see myself. I didn't see my potential. Others see our potential sometimes, and we don't. And we're our, what, we are our worst critics, right? And I feel poetry, though, it doesn't, it doesn't criticize. It loves you exactly who you are just like the poem says it's you I love you exactly who you are though others may fall away things may fall away I will always be the thing that's consistent and that's why I think it's important for even if you don't think your poetry is good it's good it's good you don't understand it but someone's going to hear it and they're going to get it and you won't know how you may never know what your impact is but it's the whole point that you tried mm -hmm. and that's important mm -hmm. Keisha, um, we're going to need to wrap things up. Um, we'd like for you to provide some closing comments, if you would, please. Sure. So um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for having me. This, this has been such a pleasure. Um, and also, if anyone uh, is looking to look me up, reach out to me after this session um, on Facebook. My name is Lady Floetry, um, after the group <laughs> Floetry. Um, and if you want to reach me on um, Instagram, then it is Ms. Keish, M-Z, Keish with uh, two E's. Um, otherwise, my herbal business side where I help do my healing and things like that for that self-discovery piece, it's called Heal Thyself 180. So again, Healing Thyself 180. Um, and that's the best way to reach me. And that's my Etsy name for any of my healing arts. So Again, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak my truth. And I hope it does help somebody and touch somebody. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Keisha. This has been very, very enlightening. And thank you for, um, you know, for letting us kind of come in on the ride with your poetic journey and, and learn from it and see it through your eyes and then help us open our eyes as well. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you everyone for watching. We're grateful for your support on the Facebook page and on YouTube. Please continue to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you again for watching. Thank you again, Keisha, for being our guest poet. And we'll talk soon on the next Poetry and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed.